this is your foul pal Darrell talking. And in this video, first we're going to talk about the growth and the blooming cycle of a pathiopetalum. Then we're going to talk about the lighting, the type of lighting that you need, darling. Then we're going to break it down to the temperatures, the watering, and what to do when a beautiful bloom falls off of your pathiopetalum. Stay tuned, darling. You have your flowering phase, which is which my baby Jan right now is in, okay? This is a beautiful flower, honey. This is uniqueness, charisma, nerve, and talent, darling. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. You will not find this at the grocery store, darling. You will not. And my husband and some other people are entitled to their opinions, they believe that this pathiopetalum jan is um, ugly. And I just believe that it's because we fear what we don't understand. And with that being said, after the flowering phase is over, then she also have, and the flowering phase is normally in the summertime, in the summer months, okay? Now you have her growing phase, which is going to be in the fall and the winter which is coming up um, soon. And what she's going to do then is she's going to start producing those little fans that we was talking about, okay? You see that little baby right there? My next pathiopetalum um, flower is going to come from this fan right here if treated properly, okay, guys? You also have your dormancy period, which is in the spring. You're, when she's in her dorm, dormancy phase, what she's actually doing is producing her new roots, okay? And you want to make sure that she has time to produce those new roots because if she doesn't produce new roots, she will not be able to supply herself with adequate enough water because she already is a heavy drinker because she's not um, like the Phalaenopsis that you want to plant in moss. This is just a cover of moss I put on top because... Um, she has some roots exposed and she likes moisture around her and we all know honey some New Zealand spaghetti moss will keep the moisture up darling So me placing the moss on top of the roots. It was just another um, way for me to keep the humidity Around her now if you don't choose to layer her with a um, of a layer of moss Then what you can do is get you a humidity tray Put a little stone pebbles at the bottom of it, and when it evaporates, it'll just keep enough moisture around the pathiopetalum to keep her happy, okay? So, stay tuned, Fab Pals. We're going to keep it rolling, baby. What type of lighting does this darling need, honey, to make her shimmer and shine, honey? What do you want to do? Well, the pathiopetalums belong to the low-light group of orchids, Okay? So you want to put her in a east or west window. That's ideal. But they could grow under fluorescent lights like my foul pal in my other video, um, the, per the um, grower that I got it from. He said she could even grow under fluorescent lights, if you will. Some can just place her on a coffee table. She will be just fine. Guys, this was one of the reasons that I chose to get her. Now, a lot of people want to bring some type of orchids into their workspace. However, not all phalaenopsis are going to be able to give you those big um, reblooms because fluorescent light is not good enough for phalaenopsis orchid. So this baby right here, this is an orchid that is exquisite. I do not have to worry about um, if she's getting another light. I don't have to run, wake up at six o'clock in the morning, try to put her on the windowsill, darling. Jam does not need all of that, okay? She don't need that. So whatever kind of light going on in your house, unless you live in the cellar, it will be sufficient, darling. It will be sufficient. Okay, fab pal. So whether or not you can tell if your pathiopetalum is getting too much light or not enough light is by the color of the leaves. Now, it should be this color, not to tell you that you should try to be like me, honey. You're not saying that you should be like orchids for dummies, honey. I'm not I'm not saying that, honey. We will all get there, each one, teach one, darling. So, and um, a lot of people were saying that this guy named Ed's Orchid um, is like the master of pathiopetalums. Um, okay, so 
Um, what I'm going to say is I'm going to bring as much light to the patio pedalums as I can, darling. I'm going to try to see if I can get you girls to go out and get you a patio pedalum because look at this foliage. It's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely exquisite. You won't find this at Ikea, darling. You will not. So... Um, the leaf color should be medium green, okay? This is medium green. What you don't want her to be dark green, like my phalaenopsis that I give a lot of um, Calmeg and Epsom salt to. They have the, that deep, dark foliage, like the spotting of it. You don't want the whole leaf to be that color, okay? That's mean that she is getting, um, they're not getting enough light, okay? Now, if they're getting too much light, they will have a, red, a reddish tinge or even yellow leaves, okay? That means they're getting too much. And so you see my baby is just right, so she's okay. And that's what I'm loving about Jan. I leave Jan to just sit there and do what she do, and me and Jan is getting along just fine. Like I told you, my house um, temperature, I like it cold up in here, darling. We not sweating at all, honey. When I get out the bathtub, honey, I want to know that I'm going to stay clean, okay? Nobody ain't got time to be sweating and cooking at the same time. No, ma'am, Pam. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so, so Jan is, she is self-sufficient. A lot of people is putting bad words, putting their mouth on Jan saying that um, that they're temperamental. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, they're not. Leave them alone and they okay. Now, how you doing? You can grow these be beautiful patio petalums outside. However, if you don't have this, a greenhouse or a setup um, like my foul pal Maria Young, honey, where, um, honey, she got so many orchids, honey, it just... Look like one big orchid, honey. I mean, she, honey. So, um, if you don't have um, a setup outside where Jan could be nicely hid but still looked upon when you choose to, then you're going to set her up for failure. Go ahead and keep her in the house or in the office space. That's best for her. So, the humidity, because, um, you know, humidity and temperature, it goes hand in hand. You want to make sure that your humidity is around 40, 50 percent. That's like the typical humidity in anyone's home, darling. I'm trying to tell you, honey, get you one of these, honey, and you won't have to worry about it. You won't have to worry. Now, as I was saying, your patio petalums with the molted leaves as mine, these are referred to as the warm growers, okay? And what that means is they enjoy the same temperatures that we do in our home, which is 75, between 75 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the day. And at nighttime, um, she can go to um, 60 to 65 degrees. And that's, I, that's what I do. That's how we get down in my house. So, now be aware, okay? Let's be real. Be aware that the temperatures in your, um, on your windowsill is going to be um, a little different than um, the temperatures in the um, humidity in your home, okay? Um, that's why I said, honey, don't put her in the windowsill. This is Lady Venus. If you see a slipper from this, from her pouch, if that looks like a slipper to you, honey, I don't know what area you was growing in. However, in the orchid community, if you say a slipper orchid, people are all automatically going to know what you're talking about. Everyone is not going to be able to go up to you and say, hey, Pethia Padalam, Hung Shang Bay time, Hung Shang Ruby darling. They're not going to be able to say that. So keeping it simple, orchids for dummies. Her name is Lady Venus, but the, the, so people know what you're talking about. Because until the word is on the curb, honey, people don't know. That's why I'm doing this. This is Lady Venus, okay? But um, um, like I said, um, she can withstand temperatures all the way up from 95 degrees Fahrenheit to the low 40s. So, you know, a regular person growing plants, you know when to bring your plants inside, but anything below freezing, okay? Now we're going to talk about the watering, okay? I'm going to show you a small demonstration coming up on how I wash, how I flush out the pot and how I water her. And I would suggest that you guys do the same because they have no pseudobulbs. You want to water more frequently, okay? So I would say water about 
twice a week. That's what I've been doing. And now the cooler temperatures are coming. I'm going to start doing probably once a week. Now, it, us experienced growers are able to tell by the weight of the pot when she should and shouldn't be watered. Now, if you're not experienced, if you are a beginner, a novice, um, go ahead and just fill the top. If the top is dry, go ahead, um, give her water. If you're in doubt, they say wait a day, okay? So, like I said, she loves to have wet roots, but not soggy roots. There's a difference. It's also going to basically um, determine what type of media you're using, whether you're using bark, moss, perlite, um, all of that yumbo jumbo type stuff, okay? Now, what I'm using is a mixture of everything with a layer of um, sphagnum moss on top. And that's just because I plan on um, reducing the amount of times that I water her per week. Two times per week um, is ideal until the cooler temperatures come, okay? You don't want, you can't put her in a water culture, okay? You can't do that because these are terrestrials, meaning that they grow in soil. They don't grow all out on the trees and stuff like Phalaenopsis. You can't give these beautiful babies the same care as Phalaenopsis because it's not. Now, um... Um, they don't like to be dry because you know with the phalaenopsis you want to give them a little dry day. No, 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 no. If you want her, if you let her dry, get dry, let her get bone dry. That bloom gonna be gone like that. She gonna get set back like that, and you gonna be one of those people saying, "Oh, I'd have had this pathiopelum for forty eight years, and she has not rebloomed for me yet, darling." I'm trying to tell you how to care for the pathiopelum. The Lady Venus. This is what's going to keep her reblooming each year. We're going to keep this ball rolling with the updates, honey, because it's going to be it's going to be proof in this pudding. It's going to be proof. Now they also, um, unlike Phalaenopsis orchid, they like the hard water. Okay, they love chlorine. Okay. Make sure that you saturate whatever type of medium that you choose to use with your um, pathiopatellum, okay? And once a month, you want to make sure that you give her a good flushing with distilled water, okay? Because all of that salt from the hard water and the fertilizer, it will build up, honey, and cause some problems. So that's not what you want. See, I didn't even touch Jan. And she started nodding her head like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So she, baby Jan is, honey, this is a real person. Get with it. Now, now you know the salt um, residue is going to be white. And I'm going to show it to you. So, foul pals, do you see all of this white substance that's all over the bark and the perlite? That is going to be your salt substance. That's come from using um, hard water and it comes from using your fertilizer. So as I said, once a month, you want to make sure that you flush this pot all the way out because what these salts can do is burn the roots and you don't want to do that, okay? All right, foul pals. So now that I have completely saturated her in the water from the faucet, now I'm going to use the rest of my um, rainwater to um, just go ahead and flush out the pot, okay? And that's how you want to take care of her when it comes to watering, okay, foul pals? So now that we've talked about how to water, how to water the plant, let's talk about what type of fertilizer and when to fertilize and all this and that. So now that is about to be the cooler months, um, I'm going to only fertilize her once a month. Now, in, in the warmer temperatures or the warmer climates, you want to have a low dose every other week. You know how the American Orchid Society say weekly, weekly, which means don't give them the dose that's on the, um, on the bottle. You want to give them just a small amount. Go ahead and watch my How to Water a Phalaenopsis video, and it will give you the same um, variation that you would need to do to water this pathio. Pedal of money. Okay? Now, 
if you are using bark like my auntie fab pal Carolyn from Jacqueline's Orchids, you want to use a high nitrogen. And that's going to be something like 30, 10, 10. Now, if in moss or in any other type of uh, media, you want to use something that's balanced like 25, 25, 25, or 30, or 30, or 30, I mean 30, 30, 30. Uh, remember that when the um, flowers fade and drop, let them drop naturally. Do not go yanking at her bloom, saying. Do not do that, okay? Let them fall naturally. Then you're going to want to cut the flowers, um, flower stalk all the way to the base of it, okay? And that's when, when once you cut it, that's when you want to start using more fer fertilizer, okay? So, Pal Pals, I thank you so much for spending your time with me, for tuning in to Orchids for Dummies. I hope that you guys um, take heed of my information, that you go ahead and um, let your baby fan out, honey. Like I said, she grows fan, so let that baby fan out on you, and she would definitely rebloom for you the following season, okay? But just give her a little patience, a little, little loving and care, and I promise you, um, we all love Phalaenopsis. We are all foul pals, but you have to give it to my Pathiopetalum Jan, honey. This is exquisite. This is well thought of. I mean, I kind of like... Pretty people versus intelligent people. This is an intelligent plant, okay? She's intelligent. To be able to do all of this um, striations and, I mean, just just so thought out is intelligent versus a phalaenopsis, which is always going to make sure she give you her pretty face, okay? So, foul pals, make sure to leave any comments and suggestions in the comment box below. Make sure to let me know if you have a video with the Pathiopetalum. Like I said, each one teach one. If I missed anything, please let me know. And spread word! Spread word! Orchids for dummies! Until next time!